Now, for example, uh, now let us see how to access these memory locations uh, which are dynamically allocated to a variable. Uh, let us suppose you are having a main function. In the main function, first of all, you are declaring an array. array. So you are doing int a5. Okay. And maybe you have stored some data into this locations. Maybe the data is 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Okay. And then you are having one more uh, variable int star p. And this is dynamically allocated. So you are doing int star malloc size of integer if you want to take the size of float then you just have to write float here if you want to take the size of character then just you just have to write this character here so this is the size of function if you give a data type to the size of function or a data variable to the size of function then it is only going to tell you what is the size of that data type or the data variable okay and then you are doing multiplied by 5 okay so if you view this statement in a gra uh, graphical way then you can see that there are five index locations which are allocated so this is the first index location this is the second index location the third, third index location this is the fourth index location this is the uh, fifth index location okay and let us suppose the base address is 2000 then this 2000 will be stored in this p right now if i do p of 0 is equal to a of 0 okay that means from this p i'm trying to access this zeroth index location so from this p i'm trying to access this zeroth index location and at this zeroth index location i've stored the data which is stored by a so it is now going to store 9 okay and then i can also do something like star of p plus 2 is equal to a2 okay that means here it is saying star of 2000 plus 2 which is going to give me star of 2004 because we are going to uh, increment with the scalar value so 2 into size of integer so it will be uh, size of integer is 2 bytes then it is going to give me 2004 okay and at that location we are storing the value which is stored by this a2 so this a2 is going to store 7 so at this location I am trying to store 7 okay and even I can do star of uh, maybe star of p plus 0 is equal to a of uh, 3 let, let us suppose that means this is equivalent to saying p of 0 is equal to a of 3 okay you, you are storing this data to this in location so at the index location 3 in the um, in this array a we are having this value 6 therefore 6 will be stored here okay so in this way in this way you can uh, take use of this memory locations now the question is what is the difference between this arrays and this malloc function now let me just tell you if you use this malloc function then this memory location and this complete statement will be execution of this complete statement will be faster than this statement because in any way the C program has to uh, change this declaration to this declaration okay and this declaration to this declaration so instead of using this declaration that means instead of using this if you write this kind of declaration for your array or variables then the, accessing the memory location will be easier for the C program okay and so now let us see what is the difference between these memory locations these memory locations so if i write int a5 is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 okay this is the first array a and then i'm doing int star p is equal to int star malloc size of int into 5 Okay, let us suppose we are having these declarations. Now, in this declaration, in the first declaration, if I do a is equal to a plus 2, that means I am trying to change the address which is stored in a. So, if we visualize it, then this is, for example, this is your array a. It is having multiple index locations. And this is the base address of this array. And a is storing the base address of this array. 
right? And you are trying to do a is equal to a plus 2, that means you are trying to do a is equal to 1000 plus 2, which is going to give us 1004. And then to that location, you may want to perform some work, but this is not allowed. In case of arrays, you cannot change the base address of this array for this a. You can take some other pointer. For example, you can have you could have taken int star b is equal to a and before this statement obviously before this statement you could have taken int star b is equal to a and then you have done b is equal to b plus one. So in this case it is allowed because b is a pointer, right? And here a is a mnemonic. Okay, then you cannot change the base address of this a. But in case of this declaration where you have uh, used this malloc function then you can do p is equal to p plus 2 or p is equal to p plus 4 this is allowed okay so this is the difference between uh, basic array declaration and this malloc functions okay now you can use this malloc functions to even declare an array of structures or memory located to some structures for example you can write a program something like struct student okay then you are having int id let us suppose and then you are having float percentage where these are the two members of this structure student okay and then you are doing in the main program main struct student s1 okay and then you are having struct student star s2 that means this s2 is a variable is a pointer of type student that means it is going to point to some memory locations okay which that memory location will be of type student then you can do s2 is equal to struct student star malloc size of student okay so what does it mean it mean uh, here we have to write size of struct student struct student okay so what does it mean? It means this malloc function is going to allocate these many amount of memory which is given by this size of function. That means the size of function is if the size of integer is of 2 bytes and the size of float is 4 bytes then this size of function is going to allocate 6 bytes of memory and then it is going to allocate those uh, it is going to return the address of this, those 6 bytes of memory and that address is converted to this structure pointer so this S2 is going to store that address. Okay, so if you view it, visualize uh, visualize it, then it will be something like this. This struct, uh, this malloc function is going to locate this memory, which is having an ID part and which is having a percentage part. And this S1 is actually pointing to the address of this memory location. Okay, and if the base address is 1000, right, and the address of percentage will be 1002 because the size of a digit is of 2 bytes right then s1 well is storing 1000 and then if you want to access this id part so this is s2 not s1 because i've stored s2 uh, the address of this memory location into s2 okay then if you want to access this id part then you can do s2 arrow id is equal to 5 right that means this 5 will be stored here okay if you do s2 arrow percentage is equal to 7 that means this 7 will be stored here okay so this is how you can even use the power of malloc function to de define your own uh, variables where S s1 and s2 are pointing to those variables okay then you can even have self referential structures within these structures with uh, these structures okay so what are self referential structures so if you have struct uh, let us suppose this is some node and then you are doing int data and then you are doing struct node star link okay so if for example you are having this structure 
okay you can see here that this struct node is calling itself that means this we are having a structure node right and in this structure node we are calling itself to make a pointer of this same uh, data type right and if you view it visually then this is something like this this is the structure node where we are having a data part and then we are having a link part and this link part is going to store an address of some other structure of, of the same type okay now you can write a program like this main uh, struct node s1 then you are doing struct node s2 and then you are doing s1 dot data is equal to 5 and then you are doing s2 dot data is equal to 7 and then you are doing s1 dot link is equal to address of s2 okay and then you are doing s2 dot link is equal to null okay so you can have this program and then you can have multiple lines of code so if you visualize it then you'll see that it is something like this this is the variable s1 so in the variable s1 in the data part you have stored 5 right and then there's a variable s2 so this is the variable s2 in the data part you have stored 7 right and then here in this line you are saying store the address of this s2 at this link location of this variable s1 so if the address of s2 is 2000 therefore this 2000 will be stored here so in another way you can say you are this s1 this link is now pointing to this uh, some other data variable s2 okay right so you can do things like this and you can uh, work according to this and this if you see this line that means this null is stored here okay now if you if you see it then you you will start getting an idea that you can declare a linked list like this in this linked list if you see a linked list and linked link list is something like this okay okay uh, in the linked list we are maybe having some data part and then we, we may be having a link part here also maybe having a data part and here also we may be having a link part and so on so now uh, if you know structures then you can create a node of a linked list with the help of these structures and you can define your own linked list after this okay so after this let, let us just move on to the next topic which is linked list and we'll define our how we'll see how to define a node for a linked list and then we'll see how to allocate memory to a linked list and then we see how to access uh, different locations in the linked list and how to perform different operations in the linked list okay